So just scrying the lingua ignota word pangizo, which is the word for penitent. And having already called forward my holy guardian angel, I'm seeing the first thing is a cross. And this, that what I'm seeing is I'm being shown once again, a third dimension to this, which is sort of to say the XYZ or the WXYZ axes. And what I'm being shown is this sense that if you are engaging in these activities, these self abnegation activities, these activities which really emphasize the the self-mortification, for lack of a better term, or ego-mortification, that in that sort of like Christ putting oneself and making one's whole life like that same Christ sacrifice, that you develop these different dimensions within yourself. So it's basically sensing and, and hearing Hildegard here coming in and saying it's basically the, the height of the Western magical system. Whereas um, an ascetic in the Eastern tradition may be going through something similar. This one is very much about um, following Christ's example more directly by using one's life in in service and not about self glorification so that you turn you tune down the signal on your own thoughts your own mind your own whatever it is you have going on so that you can allow yourself to experience that glory of god more directly and all of the different dimensionality that is implied by doing that and really develop a very, um, an ability to sense and understand more of God and his creation, of which we still know so very little. And so that's the first thing I'm seeing. The second thing I'm seeing, I'm, I'm sort of getting this sense of like isolation and so with that coming through, there's also a lot of one's spiritual things that you need to work through. And it sort of gets shown back at you, right? It's sort of like, um, I forget who qu the quote I'm going to mess up. I want to say Voltaire. Something about how a person, the trouble with humanity or whatever the case may be, is like we are not okay spending time alone in a room with ourselves <laughs> with you know it's like that's the easiest thing in the world to do in theory right no no devices or anything like that to distract you can connect you to the outside world but just just you alone in your thoughts because then all those things come back to you and how are you going to deal with that so the sense i'm getting is is that a penitent in the sense that she's using she she wrote that word down when translating this, or the Latin equivalent of it, is that you are purposely walling yourself in. So there's this old technique where nuns used to do this. They used to literally get themselves enclosed in a, in a wall with just a little bit of food passing back and forth. So very much the medieval equivalent of today's float tanks. But what are you going to do when that's all you have? You and your thoughts and God. And if you have led a sinful life, then there's a lot more to work through. And in the sense of, you know, I, I personally use the sense of sins as in making a mistake, but what are you going to do? How are you going to deal with what in the East we might call past karma, the fact of your sins, whatever? How do you, how are you going to handle that? Right. And if you, if you can't handle your past actions, good, evil, indifferent with a sense that doesn't, with, with 
with a recognition that doesn't distort your sense of who you are with respect to the universe, then good luck. But the process of enclosing yourself, forgetting that name, that cloistering, uh, that, you know, we talk about people who like literally get themselves enclosed. If you can't handle that, then obviously a penitent's life is not for you. But somebody who's committed to doing that and to working through their things, through a very astrologically, we'd, we would call this a 12th house means, through isolation. If you can do that, then it's like eventually you learn to stop making an enemy of yourself and to stop making an enemy of the world around you in, in, as a result of that, as above, so below, and as below, so above. And instead, you're able to experience the richness and fullness of this wonderful life. And uh, all of the levels of spirit that um, get revealed to you. So I'm looking for anything else. I want to be sure I do this, this one in particular justice, because I think it speaks a lot to... Um, things beyond just the word penitent itself. And obviously the, the main thing is humility. So even if you may hold an important position or have ever held that once, <laughs> that hierarchy goes away real quick <laughs> when you're uh, enclosed away from the rest of the world. So very much a sense of enclosure, but we also forget that we all started off at, uh, enclosed, right? And a lot of us, you know, they, that can be very much um, a state of safety that we can aspire to. But at the same time, in this actual world, there's a lot of work to be done, just as there's a lot of work it took to grow, <laughs> which we forget about, right? And that a lot of that was externalized to our mothers but internally, um, there's a lot of energy consumption. And frankly, our minds are doing a lot, even in utero. But so that doesn't mean you get away from having to work or do anything else. Right. But the, the spirit of a penitent is somebody who's, who's work outside, who's not having not working for an external thing on the outside means that they're working for the internal thing and that it's good work and that it eventually becomes very heavenly work. And it's sort of like what Christ said about building up treasures in heaven rather than here on earth. Um, so I'm seeing a flower, a three petaled flower I'm hoping this isn't like yesterday's gardening coming into focus, but um, yeah, and there's sort of like this, the epistle and the, so I'm seeing this sort of come out and it's like, it's like, I mean, the three, Petaled flowers, obviously, like the Trinity, but it's sort of like reaching towards. And so I'm not sure if this is strictly speaking related to the word penitent, but at any rate, it's what I'm seeing. I don't want to deny that I'm seeing it. It's like, it's sort of like coming out, trying to trying to touch. So I know that in previous visions, I've seen angels being shown as bees, which pollinate. And I think that that seems to be the message here is that it's reaching out to us in the sense of um, us becoming more angelic in our spirits and being able to 
reach, uh, be, be reached out to by the gentleness of God. And I'm seeing a little bit more in the way of visions. At first I thought it was a spider, but it was, it's some four-legged bug. And it's right in the middle of it. So this might relate to a previous video on um, depression and all of that, but it's very particular. It's sort of ascending and descending this pistol or stamen or I forget which. Sorry, I'm not an expert on this. Um, and it's almost as if It's almost as if like this is sort of like the fact that our dark sides can lead to the to the divine. So somebody who's strictly speaking only interested in material gain and the things of this earth. So the four legs would represent the four elements of this earth. Um, but we're sort of it, it, the fact that it's wrapped around that central part of the bloom is telling me that um, it's being defined, its shape is being defined, and its movement is being defined by God ultimately. So, very interesting. And, and there's something more to this, but I'm, I'm told I will be shown more of this at a later video, or later, later vision, I should say, which may or may not be recorded as a video. So, anyway. There it is. Thus ends the vision.